Would you agree that natural selection is different from evolution? Let's see, you want me to say yes or no, and I'm trying to think of a way to say neither. <laughs> hmm. Uh, I would say that the modern synthesis, or the modern version of evolution, which is neo-Darwinism, modern synthesis, that version of evolution requires natural selection of mutants. So you have to have mutation and natural selection, time and death, those are your, those are your tools that you have to work with. But there's a host of evolutionists who um, see that that, that program, that, that paradigm, is ineffectual to produce the kinds of changes that um, it needed to have produced in order to change um, a cell into a human, okay, and so uh, over any amount of time. So mutations and natural selection can't do that job, so my evolutionary colleagues are coming up with all kinds of alternative versions of evolution that invoke all kinds of different ideas, not just mutation of, uh, the selection of, of, of mutations. So I'm trying, to, I'm trying to help us define evolution, what does that mean, okay? So it, it means, um, I mean, what are, you, what are you saying it means in your, what, what do you mean by it in your question? Uh, I'm actually more concerned about natural selection, specifically like over the course young earth creation through the amount of time that we perceive it to be, say 2,000 years beyond, do, can we adapt as human beings through that period of time, through say five generations? Oh, adaptations happen fast, and most of the examples of adaptations that we're studying now uh, happen based on uh, programming and not based on uh, external conditions doing the selecting. Okay. So adaptation is different than evolution? I mean, it depends on how you define them. But we recognize and acknowledge that creatures are adapting. Mankind is adapting, definitely. But we acknowledge that it's happening fast and it's happening, um, what's the word? Tar it's targeted. It's, in All other right. words, it's adaptations that are suited to the specific conditions, which means the organism is detecting the conditions and then deploying some trait variation that targets those differences in conditions. And this points to a level of design and engineering that's just mind-boggling. That's what I'm getting at. That's what we're starting to see. And we have examples. So, for example, uh, our evolutionary colleagues are, are stunned by how the stickleback fish, which they use as a model for evolution because it changes so rapidly from a marine version with big spines and big armor, to a, soft, a, a, a softer version in freshwater where the spines go away and the armor diminishes. And it can do this in just like four, five, six generations. And so it's, and, and you don't even have to kill a bunch of fish to, to, get, to get it. You don't have to kill the unfit. You don't have to deselect any to get this to happen. All they do, the fish actually are detecting uh, differences in the marine environment and differences between the marine and the freshwater environments. And then they deploy these trait variations. It's all by design. In these, in these, and there's more and more examples of this that are coming out in the literature. In fact, it's the most exciting area of research at our institute. We're working with, uh, uh, with cave fish uh, right now. Dr. Thompson is becoming a world expert on the <laughs> cave fish genetics. Because what we want to know is what are the genes that are behind this going from sighted to blind? Right. So. It's an entire body reworking of the cave fish. So it's not that it's the eye development has, has undergone uh, apoptosis or programmed cell death, but the entire body of the fish is reworked. So it's deploying mechanosensors uh, along its lateral line. It's employing many more taste buds. The brain is a different size, a different shape. The entire <laughs> body of the fish is literally changing, and they know now that it happens very quickly. So, um, so actually, there's this entire segment of the evolutionary community that is rejecting this paradigm of natural selection because it's, it doesn't do anything. It's, it's kind of an empty paradigm. They call themselves the third way, and they're seeing the same thing that, that we're seeing, and we actually get a lot of ammunition from this, this entire segment uh, of evolutionists actually had a huge meeting at Cambridge uh, when was it 2018 and uh, anyways they realized that everything that the creatures are doing to adapt is internally programmed within them 
So, you know, they see a set of conditions, the sensors uh, that are on these creatures detect these conditions. It, it goes into, an, then these, this cascade goes into this internal logic inside the creature and it deploys, you know, a, a certain phenotype. It's called phenotypic plasticity. You'll see that term also in the literature. So anyways, we're seeing the same thing and, and we agree, but these evolutionists are saying, well, we're rejecting natural selection. That doesn't really, it's not a real paradigm. We see that creatures are, are internally programmed to do what they do and, and adapt, but we still don't want to believe in creation. We just need more data to, <laughs> to figure out what's going on. So, but anyways, we would agree, although we would say there's a creator that who is omnipotent, all-knowing, all-powerful that, that created these systems. So. so you can still believe in this small-scale adaption, specifically the examples of the fishes that you mentioned earlier. Well, some it's of it's pretty major. Um, like the stick spiders in, in Hawaii. You can have these stick spiders on different islands, and if you were looking at them, you would say that's a different not just a different species, but that's a different genus of spider. But it turns out when they studied these things, these <laughs> spiders were genetically identical. They were just based on the environment they were living in. They developed it to look like a completely different spider, different colors, different morphology, everything. It's just, it's wild. But, uh, so that's what we're seeing, so. Thank you. Yeah.